What's up? It's Friday. Happy Friday, Matt Helbig and Email Geeks. Welcome back, Email Geeks, to Feedback Friday. We're back together again. <laughs> We're so, it's been so long, brother, bro. We are here. What is Feedback Friday again? We look at emails and we talk about what's really good and not so really good yeah, about that's them. Right. Yep. This episode is sponsored by Influence. From subject lines to pre-header text, call to action button placement, email content, header images, and more, you can test up to five versions of an email with the Influence Marketing Platform. Get a demo at the link below. I've been following this brand, uh, Tracksmith, for a little while. They caught my eye because they're a fashion brand, some sick photography, and they care about live text, which you know I'm kind of a nut for. They're doing some really nice work in their emails. Super elegant, scalable, great on mobile. Can I walk you through? Sure, yeah. These are very similar to the on emails we featured in a previous episode, so I'm excited to go through these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we kind of jump through here, I think there's some cool stuff going on. They use GIFs well to walk us through their product line a little bit and give us a sense of how these nice little running undies are going to work for me. Notice, bow, 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 live text. Love that. That's pretty hot. It works great. I'm not a fan of this much uh, centered text from a design perspective. I talk about this all the time, but it's okay here. Why? I think it works here for a couple of reasons. One is the what's called the measure, which is like the length of characters from this side to this side it's not that long and so it's doable i can still read it because the text size is still pretty large the other thing that makes it work here is there's so little design treatment that it just gets out of the way so the only complexity that to this layout is just this and that's it there's no lines there's no doodads there's no competing interest and so it's it still works so from a design perspective, but back to like email strategy, I think they're doing a good job of showing me a product line. I get to see it in action. I get to get, come down here and see how like these, if you're a runner, like having a really good inseam and a gusset or however you call that thing, like that's important. You know, like the first time that I bought a pair of Lululemon shorts, I was like, they cost how much? This is absurd. And then I ran in them and it was like, all right, game over. This is legit. I get it. So I'm kind of into them. And if Tracksmith wants to send me some of these to try on, that's cool. I would I would accept that. It doesn't influence our email score though, right? <laughs> yeah, no one has ever, ever sent us anything, just to be clear. Anyway, so like cool photography. They do a great job here, I think, of like really getting into the heartbeat of athletics and of running. Just fantastic design. I would love to know who does their design. They've just really got some good... Good stuff going on here. Again, using GIFs to showcase a product line in lieu of something like uh, a slider, which honestly, I think the metrics that I've read say that sliders and carousels very rarely get used. You know, like having a showcase like this that just walks you through without any effort. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Feels sweet. Real clear CTAs. One of the things I love about these emails is the CTAs are just no nonsense, but nothing else competes with them. Arguably, you could say like this doesn't feel like a link, but it's this gold color, but it is a link. So even though visually it doesn't look like a link, but at least it's the same color as this CTA. The only other thing that we harp on and on about, and even I've been known to ship some emails with just these icons, but I often feel like they could put actual social content to give me an idea of what's behind those, but it's not hard for me to go and discover those. Another thing that I think is cool here, you'll notice back here, white and then cream, white and white and white and white and white. They had another gray one. I guess we missed getting it in here, but like they have such a simple layout with this setup that they can change background colors and nuance their brand a little bit more. And I think that's pretty rad. So you see the same thing happening here. They've got just a really effective way to use their system. So they use this nice big typeface, lead into a photograph, little bit of text and a GIF and a CTA, another photograph, nice big heading, photograph, paragraph. 
they walk through this stuff in a really nice way. I love these active feeling cutouts. So unlike a lot of photographs where things are cut out on the back, this feels active. Like you feel like these shorts are running themselves, you know, and, and I like that photography. So if you can spend some money on some product photography or, or photography like this, you should. It goes so far in communicating brand. But look how simple their email template is. And it's so effective. I want to like shop these products. I want to feel these products. You don't have to be fancy. You can really get out of the way. And I think they're doing that here. You know, similar sorts of lockups, but slight variations, you know, doing two side by side here and slightly different typography. They're using live text for their description text and not for their headings. It's better than nothing. So they could be, they could definitely import that as a heading. It's not hard to do. I think this is working really well. This is a great example of breaking the mold a little bit and trying something a little bigger, a little fun. See what's happening here. And they're telling a little bit of a story about a different line that they've got. And, you know, this copy is fun. It's interesting hearing a little bit of history around running. I love it. I think they're doing a great job. Great copywriting. This is a nice touch where they're actually layering these active products over typography. I think that is a nice way to kind of make something feel custom and not like a template. There's a feeling that we get as readers that things, they feel like templates, they feel cheaper that way. But if you push the limits a little bit, man, it can feel fantastic. So I think they've done a nice job here with this. Same kind of lockup, but look how much room they're getting out of this. I want to read the stories. It feels like it's about me as a runner. And I like that. This clothing line feels like it's made for me as a runner. And it has a really unique, distinct brand from something like Nike. And I think they've done a great job of really telling that story. Here's another small variation where they're doing this side-by-side -side lockup here. And I think it works really well. I've seen some people kind of blunder this and I think they're making it work here. Telling me more about the product line, giving me some stories, giving me some quotes. This is a nice way to incorporate a little bit of illustration into their story. I personally would say that because they're not using illustration in other areas, the goal doesn't feel like it should be a link, but maybe I kind of want to know what's behind there now. So I'm going to check that out after the episode, but I think a picture of some yarn would have been interesting, but it works. I think they're doing a great job. They made their own choice and it's a good one. I just love how simple this is. We talk about design golf a bunch. The idea that you drive toward the lowest possible score in your designs so that you're not introducing any new kind of elements that's not doing a specific job. And they've just done that so well here. You got one point for this lead heading, one point for photography, one point for paragraph, one point for this CTA, another point here and here, but then everything else is basically the same. They've done such a nice job. Of just It feels like I'm reading like a book. It just is really elegant. I love it. All right, so tell me what you think, man. I've dominated with my opinions here, but I want to hear what you think. I feel like all the emails they send feel very honest. They're not really selling you these products in some way. They're just kind of telling you little stories about how people are using these products or showcasing them. And I think you're right. The product photography and the imagery really stands out. I mean, in a lot of cases, the people shown in their photos are sweaty or tired or something like that. And I think it's kind of refreshing when you see just you know, very cleaned up stock photography. And I'm surprised just how consistent it is across all the different sends that they're doing. I do think with their live text, there might be an opportunity to use maybe a web font. I feel like this one's a very web safe font. And sitting by itself, when it's not relating to the bigger headline typography, it feels kind of basic or out of place to me. So I think if you went on their website, you might see like that body copy be a different font. So maybe there's an opportunity to have that as a web font and then this sort of be the fallback if possible. One of the things that I think they've done nice here that I was catching is using category oriented CTA, shop men, shop women. And this is a great opportunity for personalization. So in some ways, this is a question. Are you interested in men's gear or women's gear? 
And that's a really cool opportunity then to segment that user, right? So you don't necessarily segment them into, oh, this person must be a man or this person must be a woman, but rather interested in women's clothing, interested in men's. And then if they do that again, then you, you could double down on that. But that's a really interesting way. So then if I actually start checking out men's stuff, then maybe only send me the men's stuff or send me primarily the men's stuff with a little like internal ad for some additional women's stuff if I want to check it out because I'm shopping for a loved one or something like that. I think that's a nice little opportunity for personalization. Another thing is the opportunity to capture what types of clothing I'm showing interest in that might indicate like where I live. So if I'm always shopping stuff that tends to be warm weather things, that's going to tell you a lot about where I'm at or if I'm shopping at certain times of year and so on and so forth. So anytime that I, I would love to know more about what they're doing. Tracksmith folks, if you're out there, let us know. We'd love to have you on for an episode and we talk a little bit more about what you're doing, why you're doing it, what you're learning. I'm excited. I want to see what these folks do. I'm, I'm staying subscribed, man. I'm in. I hope everybody out there is hanging in there. You all are an amazing community and we really value you, but I hope that you as humans are doing well and making it through. If you ever need a, a happy word, we're on Twitter at really good email and would love to just say something nice to you. So let us know. All right. Love you, friends. Peace. Peace. Thanks again to Influence for sponsoring this episode. Book your demo with the link in the video description. Welcome, welcome to the really good email store. It's open for two weeks only. It's closing on Sunday. What? It's closing on Sunday? You can turn this t-shirt into a mask if you want. Can you tie it up and wear it like undies? We can't use any... <laughs> We're using all of this. This is gold. Internet gold. A limited time. Pick up your swag and support Dapper Inc. We're doing this to help out our friends at Dapper Inc. So we're selling these things like at cost. Super cheap. And hope you all love them. It is closing on May 31st. So this is the last week. Give it as a gift. Father's Day is coming up, yeah, you know. That's right. My dad definitely wants an unspam shirt. <laughs> <laughs>